If you could build the perfect darts player from scratch, who would you choose for each crucial area of the game? Well, joining me to play Dr. Frankenstein in this instance for this special Sport in Life dart series is Paul Nicholson and Sport in Life's very own Chris Hammer. So guys, you're in the mode of Dr. Frankenstein. We've got to build the perfect darts player. We're gonna build him on screen, so we're gonna be able to see him in every aspect. Let's start with, let's start with 180s then, Paul. I've got to go with Dave Chisnell. I think there's going to be a lot of people out there at the minute who will think maybe Dirk van Dijvenborder because he scores more than anybody right now. Uh, maybe Jose de Souza from a couple of years ago. But from my own evidence, seeing Dave Chisnell hit 180s, uh, just standing behind him in practice and seeing him do them in, in games, I've never seen anybody do it so regularly, consistently, over the course of a decade. Mm. The guy is a machine at 180s and it just doesn't seem like it's slowing down as he gets older in his career. Yeah, I'd back that because you could pick a Ross Smith, but you need evidence that he will do it for years. And Ross Smith hasn't been doing it for as long as Chisholm. I hope he does yeah. because Ross Smith is a great darting product. But I think the evidence that we have with Chizzy is that he's done it consistently for a long time. Right then, next up, finishing and doubling. Who are we relying on with that last dart in hand? Two names come to mind for me. Uh, one is Peter Wright. I just like at points in his career when the pressure has been on him from the crowd, maybe from the rankings, maybe from a team environment in playing at the World Cup. There's someone you want to throw in to help you. But I think I, I can't argue with what he's done over the last 20 years, and that's James Wade. His ability to beat players who have scored better than him throughout his career and to win with inferior averages is purely because his clutch finishing, even at times where he struggled with his mental health and struggled with his form, he's still been able to do that. And that is remarkable to me. And do you know what people used to say about James on tour? If it goes 5-5, five, five, just put him in the next round. His ability to come through last leg deciders on the floor, it's mythical. You were 5-5 five, five with him and you thought, I've got a real job on here. I remember a game, I, I hadn't beaten him in about eight years, and it was 5-5, five, five, and I had to battle this interior thing of, I've got to be probably the best last leg shootout player I've ever seen. And it took a 12 dart leg, and I had to take out 161 in the last leg just to beat him. That's the kind of thing you have to do against Wade when he's got a shot for a match, he's been brilliant at it. Is he difficult to play against because of that? I think he just comes with an aura of, if you do not put me away early, I will get you. And he's had that since the very first day I met him. High checkouts then. Who's putting on the show stop in high checkout? Oh, Chris, this is a difficult one. I mean, I think Simon Whitlock comes to mind. He was always noted as somebody who would always put in a noteworthy 170 checkout. It, it doesn't seem to happen as much now. All the 150 with three balls. <laughs> Maybe the best finish of the last five or six years, but... I think Whitlock comes to mind when it comes to the big outs. I remember a set he played at the World Championship in 2010, and the same set he took at 170 to 150. And that was against James Wade. So you think about some of the things that he was capable of in his perceived peak. But he's still doing it now. And there are more people who are maybe capable of it now, but in that period, and I would still go with Simon Whitlock. On to pressure and temperament then. As we know, and as we found out in this series, there's a lot of pressure in darts. You know, you, there can often be millions of people watching at home, mm. thousands in the arena. Who handles that best? Who's gonna go into our Frankenstein's monster of a darts player? I think there's a lot more players who have better temperaments now than ever before because of uh, work with sports psychologists and the realization as well that if you have a weak mentality, you will be thrown to the wolves. But I've got to go with Michael Van Gerwen. Throughout his career, he has been the most magnanimous winner and the most magnanimous loser of matches I've ever seen. And he never has an excuse when he comes up short, but he doesn't come up short very often. And when he wins, he, he lets everything out. But from a tunnel vision mentality, I recently had evidence of this when he was playing against Josh Rock. And we said that every game they had had, had significance. And when he came through that, I thought his focus was almost palpable. 
and that is an aspirational thing to have. Yeah, and even if he's had a few dips along the way recently, over all this time now, since what, 2012, really, he's always, you just think he's, he's just got this aura that he doesn't suffer from pressure. Um, and I think we've got to take that into account, haven't we? He, he doesn't lose his temper in the middle of games. He might get the tiniest little bit of frustration, but he won't show it. In fact, if he does, it's, it's a blue moon moment. <laughs> it, I think he may have shown a little bit of frustration very recently at a bad score, but that's the only time I can ever think about Michael van Gerwen losing his composure. Usually, he's like a conductor of an orchestra. He's the one who plays everybody else. A huge aspect of darts then is stage presence. There's no shortage of big personalities uh, at the top at the PDC. Who takes the biscuit here? <laughs> Dirk van Dijvenborde for me. <laughs> It's easy to go with Peter Wright. I think what he's done for, for people over the last 10 years, you know, giving them the licence to go out there and be who they want to be, I think that is a great thing for, for what Peter's done. But I think Dirk has taken it to the next level, to the point where he's actually injured himself with a walk-on as well. But what we're seeing now are walk-on girls or dancers on the stage at the World Championship actually mimicking his chainsaw dance and this dance here but he is getting to the stage where he can orchestrate them, stand on the stage, wait for the right moment, and then go douche, douche, douche like that, and everybody's doing it. That, to me, is proper stage presence. I'm surprised at that answer. I, I totally would have thought Peter Wright was coming out of both of your mouths there. Yeah, we can't not mention, well, you've mentioned him now. You know, he's <laughs> in being snake bite. You know, Peter Wright wouldn't have stage presence, mm. The re you know, him, because he's quite quiet, but when he becomes snake bite, he really does get that crowd. I think that's one of the most fascinating evolutions in darts. Mm. Peter Wright going from the, the shy to now this, this great personality. Although he still reverts to shy though, away from the stage, that's the remarkable. But he's still who he is. That, that's one of the best things about Peter because he's still that same person. I met Peter for the first time in 2008. I remember that day in Germany. I loved him immediately. He's still that guy. On stage, he's not. He's snake bite. That's what I admire. I admire the fact that he can separate the two, go up there, be ruthless, and when he gets off the stage, he's Peter again. Well, Peter Wright also obviously has huge crowd appeal, but does he take it here? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I'd probably have to maybe go with some, some other popular influences here. There's quite a few to go with. I mean, Eric Bristol was, was popular in his own way, mm. but then again, there have been other popular players over the years, like Phil Taylor. Don't underestimate how popular Phil was. He has his own song, Walking in a Taylor Wonderland. And even now, years after he's retired, people still sing it. Maybe not as much as they did. Mm. And people like Michael Van Gerwen, they've got their own song. If you've got your own song, you're quite popular. Hear me out here. What about Gerwin Price? Now, I know he divides opinion, but I almost find like he's the love to hate character. That is crowd appeal, isn't it? Yeah, that's a very good shout, actually. I was thinking like in two years time, I think he could have reversed everything. Um, and everyone's unanimous for him. I think he's winning crowds around now. But you're right, I think a negative, even if it's pantomime, I mean, you know this as well mm. from your time, you'd go out and people would be kind of booing you, but in a kind of, that's what you're asking for in a way. Better, better to have an opinion from the crowd than have nothing at all. Mm. That's what I was always told. And people have always had an opinion about Gezi, whether it's positive, negative, somewhere in between. And you want to be the popular person, of course. It's a, it's a little bit of a popularity contest anyway. But if it's negative towards you, at least they care on some level. So who's getting it? Who's, who gets the vote? Who has the, bit, the most crowd appeal? Who's going into this monster's personality? Mm, probably, yeah. Uh... Not a clapometer, a, a, a roarometer. Next time, as a TV event, to judge it, I think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go left field here. I'm gonna go Martin Adams. Okay. You okay. think about, you think about the Grand Slam when he finally went to the Grand Slam and look at the reaction. That's a good. He's, oh. he's thrown that in right at the. That's like snatching victory from yeah. the judges. Crow he, appeal. To be, Martin even, Adams gets even, it for me. And even now, when he does the senior events, everyone does genuinely oh, yeah. love him unanimously. Martin Adams gets it? Yeah. OK, big one, the walk-on. Who's got the, the prowess as they're walking out? Who's got the best song? Who's got the full package when it comes to walking out onto that stage? 
I mean, if you're going historical with Martin Adams to an extent, I know he still plays, but Phil Taylor's music, it was iconic. I mean, it's not my favourite walk-on, but it was it was it, um, hair stand up on people's yeah, necks yeah. when that hits and everyone knows this is the best player who's ever lived. Mm -hmm. um, that feeling, but I don't know. He's not for me the best music. No, I think it's one of the most recognisable uh, in the power for, by Snap, of course. I think everybody who's got a recognisable track that's synonymous with them, that's that's one of the best things about the track. It's got to be recognisable with the player. I actually think that some players at the top of the game these days have quite w weak walk-on tracks. They, they don't really... Uh, they're not cohesive with who they are, what brand they are. Like Rob Cross's. Yeah, I, I, I think Rob's is fine. Yeah, I'm not... A... But I don't... It's not one of my favourites. I don't think it's many people's favourite. I think there may be something out there that was would maybe be better for him. Like, uh, they tried something early in his career, didn't they? Uh, it was uh, high voltage. Oh, no, that was, yeah, yeah. I still think that. I cool. loved that. I thought it was great, but obviously at some point it fell by the wayside. What about Mervyn King, Motorhead? I like a, a heavy metal track, as you know. That's my personal Seems favorite. to be a crowd favorite as well. That yeah. is my actual favorite walk-on. I didn't expect you to say that, Chris. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think there's some great ones. I think... For it to be a great walk-on song, it has to have uh, a bit of bass to it. It's got to, got to be um, something that's been used in a big moment as well. So when you talk about uh, Snake Bites walk-on track, if you haven't heard that at a world championship, that is amazing. Mm. I saw Phil Taylor's last walk-on against Rob Cross with the lightning and the lasers. That was amazing. But the one that really made the hairs go up at the back of my neck was when Fallon Sherrick walked out against Chris Dobie. That boomed that Katy Perry track. And the cue for the, the media area, everything that was attached to that moment of walk on, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. But on a regular basis, who are you going with that walk on track every time? I think we go with Fallon Sherrick here. That was an incredible moment for darts. I think it's an incredible walk on track and it's very synonymous with her. But I think as a personal favorite, I like a bit of Dirk. Oh. I hate the music, but I get it. You love the walk on. I, I love it. It's it's him. Gets the crowd ready. Yeah, I, maybe I've just been spending too much time on the European tour yeah. with all of this hard style and up tempo stuff, but I like Dirk's and uh, there are songs that I don't like. Nathan Aspinall. Kills. I don't mind it. I don't oh. mind it. I love Nathan to bits, but. The, the walk on's just a little bit. Mr. Brown, I'm going to yeah. press you. I'm going to press so, you for oh, a decision. Uh, no, I'm going to. No, no, because we've already had him in for something else. <laughs> you can have two elements. No. This is where we're going to press Chris. Yeah, there's going to be a row here. Well, should we say Phil for historical? Because he hasn't been in. People kind of say people are watching and thinking you haven't included Phil Taylor. Is that a personal thing? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. I think I mentioned the walk on at the Worlds and it was, it was incredible. No, I mean, like, um, obviously he wasn't going to be 180s. I guess he, he, he's too much of an all-round player. Yeah, but he, he, was B, he was almost B-level everything. Right. He could do everything. Well, but Whereas there are other players who do things better than him, but they did things worse than him in other, in other categories. I did need to clear that up because people would be thinking, where's Phil Taylor? But that is a great explanation. Of all of these categories, <laughs> I didn't think the walk-on would be the one that divided the panel. OK, so let's have Phil then. I think from all of the <laughs> walk-ons that I've seen, from, from all of the walk-ons that I've seen, if we're not going to go with Fallon Sherrick, I'd go with Taylor because it's the most iconic. Well, there you have it. The perfect darts player, Frankenstein's monster, an unbeatable monster. What do you think? Do you agree with what these two have had to say? Do you agree with the selections? Let us know your picks for each of those categories in the comments below. For more in this series, keep an eye on the Sporting Life YouTube channel. And for everything else Sporting Life darts, head to sportinglife.com forward slash darts.